everybody, welcome to the show. It's me, your old pal, Dan Classic. And today, we're celebrating all of our new subscribers. <laughs> oh yeah, all five of them, Gorilla. There's more than five, asshole. But you know, it is tough to get people to check us out. Why don't you ask your cousin Buford? That guy's shitty channel has thousands of subscribers. Uh, his channel is shitty. Uh, you know what, you're right. It, it is shitty, but he's got a lot of subscribers. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call him and I'm gonna find out how he got so many. Oh, hey man, I was just talking about you. Duke, Duke, will you shut up? Dang. Anyway, what can I do you for? Yeah, Buford, I was wondering if you had any advice for me on how to get more subscribers. It's about time you ask, man. Your shitty channel's got like five subscribers, don't it? Ha <laughs> ha! Man, you try too hard, dude. You spent all that time making entertaining videos about stuff you like. I mean, why don't you make a video about something other people like, like Star Wars? Yeah, no offense or nothing, but I'm not really into Star Wars. Man, do you think I give a shit about this stuff? Man, all I care about is titties, beer, and motorcycles, dude. In fact, I made so much money off of making these dumb videos that I went out and I bought me a brand new Yamaha YZ250. Burp, 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 burp. Would you shut up, Duke? Dang! Oh man, anyway, I gotta go. Good luck with your stupid channel, man. Well, I guess we're giving Star Wars a try. Sell out. Shut up, Jess! Raz Holly, hit the music! It's, it's almost like he's like a noodle. In 1996, before Disney, before the prequels, and even before the special editions, Lucasfilm Limited created a story that was set between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. The idea was to do all the shit you usually do, licensing-wise, when you make a movie, except without the movie. There was a novel, a comic book series, trading cards, an N64 game, and of course, there were action figures. Anyway, I was at my local thrift shop and found a couple of these figures. So let's take a look at Prince Zizor. And holy shit, it's got a file card. Oh no, let me guess, let me guess. His real name is Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, and he shoplifts produce and, and sells it on the black market, right? Actually, the file card basically says, in like 4,000 words, that Zizor is the head of a criminal organization called the Black Sun, and that while he's technically an ally to Vader, he plans to take his place as Palpatine's number one. Okay, from 1996, here is the Star Wars Shadows of the Empire Prince Zizor with Energy Blades. Um, this is actually a newer figure than I'm used to, even though this thing is, you know, over 20 years old. Um, but we're going to get it out of the package and take a look at it. But first, let's take a look at the packaging. You've got the basic sort of Power of the Force or Power of the Jedi uh, Star Wars packaging, except right here it says Shadows of the Empire. Uh, you got Darth Vader's head. You have a nice little uh, holographic illustration of the of the character, which I think is pretty cool. And if you go around back, of course, you've got a file card that is like a million words long. It is like a book. You've got the collect them all here. You got the join the fan club thing and your mumbo jumbo for legal stuff. Um, yeah, so pretty good packaging. It looks nice. It looks like a Star Wars box, right? So. 
let's take a look inside. So we're gonna open this old figure, but you gotta be real careful with these old things, you know, because it's like 20 years old. So you wanna make sure that you're carefully, carefully opening this box. All right, so here he is. Prince Zizor out of the box. And um, this is what he looks like. He's got this uh, little robe that looks like it's made out of puzzle pieces. It's very Asian inspired um, with the top knot uh, hairstyle. And the, uh, you know, it's, it's open in the back like a hospital gown. I don't know why. But then you can kind of get a look on the inside here to see what it looks like. It looks like he is wearing some martial arts inspired, <laughs> inspired pants um, he's got on here. And you can see his, his back ridges because he is a lizard man of some sort, um, as it says in the file card. And, you know, if you follow any of the lore, he's also got this little gimmick coming out of the side of his head. Um, yes, very Star Wars. But the thing about the Star Wars figures that really bothers me is this. They have not changed their articulation in, what, 40 years? I mean, at this point, it's like 30, 20-something years. At this point, in 96, it's 20 years almost. And the same figures from 1977 or whatever. Of course, this looks a little bit better. It's got a nicer sculpt and everything and then got some nice details to it. And it, it, he is almost posed to get the knees bent a little bit and the uh, arms bent slightly. Um, but arms, legs, head turn. That is all they do. And as far as, you know, articulation is concerned, I guess Star Wars figures are basically just made to be you know, these ones, the three and three quarter ones, are actually tiny collectibles. These go on a shelf because playing with them, I don't know. I don't know. Like without without the posability, I maybe I'm I'm spoiled. Maybe I'm spoiled by modern figures. With the modern, what are you talking about? GI Joes have great posability. These things are three and three quarter inch figures, and you know, only predate the GI Joes by a couple of years. And even now, look at this. He's got like a thing on his belt. But anyway, like. Come on, he's he should be more posable. They should all be more posable, especially in the modern era of Star Wars, where you got into the big light, lightsaber battles and you know special effects festivals sort of thing. It's like you could barely get this guy into a vehicle if you wanted to. So, yeah, there's that. Also, he comes with these. They look like fans, but they are energy shields, and they go together like this. Um, maybe he can hold it like that. Yeah, he can hold them in his hands, he can hold them individually, he can hold them together as one thing. And, um, yeah, they've got a very, again, it's a very Chinese, very Dynasty Warriors style feel to it. Um, he is a cool looking figure, honestly. Um, let's take a look what he looks like underneath this robe. And so this is what he looks like underneath the robe. And here's something that, I re that really pisses me off about figures like this. Right here, this piece of shit thing has scuffed the inside of this figure. Or he's got some sort of paint loss or something, but it looks like shit. You know, and these were supposed to be, you know, premium action figures in the 20th century, late 20th century at least here. And they were supposed to be nice, but I don't know, man. This thing, like, he's got rub on, on these things and on his little belt buckle. He's kind of sticky. Um, I don't know why that is with a lot of these figures that I'm getting recently. Yeah, the paint, like, I don't know if it's made to look sort of patinaed on this armor. Um... Maybe it is. Maybe it's just, you know, a shitty paint job. Uh, you can kind of see, like, look at this fucking seam on this thing. Uh, it's really, like, almost like, like a weld right here. And, wow, this is really poor. So, yeah, Star Wars action figures. There you go. <laughs> Well, that's it. And you know what? I gave something Star Wars a try, and it was actually pretty fun. And I might even get some extra attention for the channel. Haha, <laughs> yeah! You might even double your subscriber account, Gorilla! You think so? Well, that might be pretty cool. Haha, <laughs> yeah! Two times five is ten! Ten subscribers! Ha 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 
Will you be serious, Jess? Anyway, that's it for this week. Raz Holly, hit the music! Shut up, dude. Dang.